Welcome to the Breakfast Leadership Show, where we interview global thought leaders on business, leadership, and life. Here's your host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network, Michael Levitt. Welcome back. I've got Glenn Campbell online. Glenn, how are you? I'm doing extremely well. Thank you, Michael. Really looking forward to this conversation. So why don't you share a little bit about you and the work that you do? Well, I'm in the business of working with leaders, and I have been for uh, a great many years now. In fact, um, I started my career with degrees in uh, commerce with a marketing major, and then I went on to do a psychology degree. Um, And then after that, I worked for about uh, 27 years in brand strategy and communication companies. And effectively, I worked with leaders to develop their brands, to develop market-leading brands. And I've done that across four continents. So I've worked in the US. Uh, I've lived in Chicago for 12 months. I lived in New York for 12 months, working with two different companies, Leo Burnett and Saatchi and Saatchi, global powerhouses of brand strategy and communication. Um, And I've worked and lived in um, Asia, Singapore, Hong Kong. Uh, I've done a lot of work up in Beijing, in China, in London, throughout Europe as well. So I've been all over the world. Um, And in that time, my business really was about developing brands, developing organisational brands. But about 15 years ago, Michael, I started my own company. I left the corporate world and started my own company. And I focused in on leaders because to me, if the leader is not um, in the right position, then of course that's going to have a you know a ripple effect for the organisation that they're leading because all the you know it all the buck really stops at the leader as they say. So I'm in the business of empowering leaders um, to become the new breed of conscious leader. So I'm talking about consciousness here, both your um, conscious mind and your non-conscious mind, to be you know really um, clear and focused about who they are, why they're here and what needs to be done to rise up to live free and thrive in a world where the old paradigms, of course, are completely collapsing. And we can see that as we speak. Definitely during this COVID pandemic, we've seen a lot of that where past leadership styles really haven't done well during these last couple of years. And it's interesting, I want to go back to something you said a moment ago about, you know, obviously you're working in leadership, but then you went back and you started studying psychology. And I'm one to believe that psychology and leadership have a lot more in common than not. So what, what was the drive for you to, you know, start up studying psychology? And I'm sure you use it all the time in the work that you do today. Well, I was, you know, it was one of those um, by chance things, to be honest. I'll be completely um, <clears throat> open here. But um, I was playing rugby at a very high level, at a state level um, in uh, my country in Australia. And um, to continue to play rugby at that level, um, I, d- I didn't really want to be working. So I spoke to one of my lecturers, my marketing lecturer at the time, who I had a great rela- uh, relationship with. And he said, well, you need to go back to university and do another degree and you really should be doing psychology because that's going to be what you need in business. You know, if you're really going to excel in marketing, you need to understand the mind and mood of people, how they think, you know, um, how they um, how they purchase, you know, how they live their lives, you know, what the processes are that goes on in their brain, in their consciousness. And he, he didn't always talk about brain. He talked about their consciousness. He was a very advanced guy for his time. And he said, you really need to kind of understand that from a psychological point of view. And um, the other thing he said is, you know, Glenn, it's going to make you way more valuable anyway. You're going to demand a higher paycheck, you know. And I went, well, that sounds like a good idea. I can get my rugby done and um, I can get this further education and be more valuable. And he was right. I mean, it served me well over the many years and I've continued um, to extend, you know, from, from straight out of university and I attended a different university to do that second degree. But straight out of university, um, I've continued my education, um, not so much in psychology, but I've extended that into parapsychology. I've extended that into um, um, neuroscience. 
Um, so I've kind of moved on to the brain in particular, uh, and I've also extended that into quantum physics. So, you know, all about energy. Yeah, that's amazing work. And I never stop learning is something that I always <laughs> strive for myself. And I notice for those people that are successful in life, whatever you want to define success as being, the common element I see in all of them is they are continuing to learn and not you know resting and saying, okay, I, I've, I've hit where I wanted to hit. And they just keep going and they keep growing their brain and their awareness. And it, what I find in the things that I've learned over the years is when I learn something new, a new skill or a new experience, whatever the case may be, I'll apply it to things that I've done in the past and go, if I had this knowledge that I have now back then, what would that have looked like? What, how would I have applied that to that situation? And I don't do it a lot. I don't look to my past too much. I, I'm more forward thinking. But from time to time, I will take an opportunity and say, okay, if I had this skill set now, what would I have done differently? Is there any lessons to be learned here which will help me going forward? Well, I think the the key thing is to, um, you know, one of the things you said there that I want to kind of focus on is this idea of awareness, um, you know, the elevation of awareness, and particularly my work focuses on self-awareness. Um, it really comes back to the self, right, to, to who you are and why you're here. And the vast majority of leaders I work with don't know. I mean, beyond, um, you know, trying to move up the corporate ladder or to increase their paycheck or increase their earnings or, you know, increase their EBIT, um, you know, their profit um, contribution or whatever, um, they don't really know why they're here. You know, they kind of get into that um, process, that functional operational approach to life where they're just kind of doing it by the numbers. Um, and so, you know, my work is to elevate them out of that functionality, out of that operationality, uh, and into an understanding of their true self. And that's really about awareness. And a part of the other work, uh, that I want to, I do with leaders, which I want to touch on, which you just talked about a moment ago, um, is the ability to live in the moment because that's all we have, right? And so uh, this idea of looking back, um, you know, is, is a meditative experience, actually, Michael. It's called reflection, right? And so you're reflecting on what you've been through and what it meant to you and what you've learnt. And I see the reflection process. Um, it, it, by the way, it's a valid form of meditation, reflection. Um, you you are starting to understand, get a deeper understanding of what the learnings are that you can apply now. And that's the key to reflection. It's not about living in the past. The past is gone. We all know that. And the future hasn't happened yet. And in fact, in the moment, you can be the creator of your own future because we're all creators. And so you've got to create your future now. And it's through the lessons that you've learned and the knowledge that you've gained. And more importantly, I think, you know, I even move past information and knowledge and I like to be able to talk about insights and wisdom. And, you know, you can only uh, glean wisdom through the application of an insight, which means the experience. I've experienced something. So now I know. You know, the Buddha once said, don't believe anything I say, find out for yourself. And what he was talking about was experience it. You know, apply your knowledge, apply the information that you've got, apply the insights that you have, um, into, uh, you know, your life and see what happens. And then you have wisdom because you can say, well, now I actually really know firsthand for myself. I'm not borrowing something from somebody else's life, which may not apply to me. I've found out for myself. So, you know, this idea of kind of shifting from, you know, uh, learning to being to knowing is what really I'm all about with leaders is, and this, you know, one of the key elements in that as well is intuition, is the ability to develop intuition. You know, Harvard did a massive study of their alumni, the most, uh, the most successful um, segment of their alumni, the top two or 3%, and they found that, um, you know, they asked them the question and they said, what are the two or three things that, you know, are keys to your continual success and you know what they listed michael one and two um trusting your intuition 
and meditation, the practice of meditation. Now, if you think about it, those things are symbiotically connected because the more you meditate, the more you develop your uh, ability to enhance your intuitive skills. And I think um, one of the other kind of insights that I've found is that we're moving away from this operational functional leader who um, is all about rationalism. You know, they've got to rationalise everything. It's all about the numbers. It's all about what the numbers say and the numbers will tell me what to do. I think what, we, what we're moving into now is the new breed of kind of highly conscious leader that knows and understands and trusts their intuitive powers to be able to guide them into making better decisions. Um, for their life and their business. And I love the movement of leadership into that direction because as life gets more, I don't want to say complex, more, I'm going to use the phrase interesting because I'm, oh, I, I, I'm, I would I'm, say chaotic. Okay, uh, yeah, chaotic. We're, 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 uh, chaotic in chaos, we're in chaos at the moment, Michael. Oh. It's, you, you can't step around it. It's chaos, what's going on in the world. Oh, sure. You know, with, you know, the the COVID-19 pandemic still kind of lingering around in certain parts of the world, supply chain issues, the Ukrainian conflict, war, war, um, (laughs) inflation costs, you know, uh, all these things. And, you know, millions of people have died in the last couple of years. It's there's in leaders and, you know, just everything, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to find a good leader right now, isn't it? I mean, just just give me one name where you you would you would look to this person and say they're a truly visionary leader. You know that that work that Collins and Porras did in the, their book Good to Great and several of their books, where they talked about visionary companies outperforming all others by a factor of fifteen since nineteen twenty six. Now you cannot have a visionary company unless you've got a visionary leader, and you know I'm I'm stretched really hard to find one person on this planet right now. There may be a lot that I don't know, but those that I'm aware of where you can say this is a truly visionary leader who is doing good for themselves and their family and people. Um, very difficult to find, Michael. Yeah, they're they're definitely, if they exist, I, I, I sense that they do, but they're flying so far under the radar and you know the world needs those people to you know get not necessarily a spotlight on them but to to walk to demonstrate to others this is how we do it because the leaders that we see today are still using old playbooks that were used a long time ago and not getting any work. results. They don't no, work they, anymore. They don't work. No, they, they don't. They, they've been proven not to work because they're what is the cause of the current situation we're in. And so, you know, those leaders that you talk about that are flying under the radar, you know, imagine if all those guys start stepping up and all those women and and a lot of women there, you know, 70% of my client base is women CEOs. I love working with women. And so if all those people step up, imagine this kind of interconnected groundswell that we'll get where it'll rise up and it'll, you know, will, um, you know, affect the top. Uh, through that sort of community-based groundswell of leaders who are rising up. That's what we're looking for, you know, because you're right. You know, I don't know who they are, but I do know they're out there. And, you know, the role I'm playing, Michael, is to work with more and more and more of them so I can help them elevate their self-awareness, become clear and focused about who they are, elevate, expand their consciousness so they can actually see the truth of what is going on around them and they can be a truth bearer. I mean, they can be a leader of truth, Um, you know, what I call a light warrior. That's what I mean by a light warrior. I mean, you know, this is kind of light versus dark, you know, white hats versus dark hats. It's kind of that, you know, that old game, but but it's a very real game. And so when I talk about developing highly conscious leaders that are light warriors, I mean, people who are rising up. And does that mean... Uh, they're not going to run great companies. Well, of course, they're going to run great companies, highly profitable companies that, you know, affect people uh, and impact people in a really positive way. And so now we're talking about a value equation, right? Um, something that's been missing in, you know, business for a long time because mostly the value equation is being you pay at the highest price we can possibly get out of you and we'll deliver as little as possible and, you know, um, we'll have five pages of disclaimers as to why we can't do that if it doesn't happen. 
you know, I, re- I was I was I was interacting with the company the other day, and I read their white paper, and the first five pages was disclaimers about all the things that they promised they could do, but were disclaiming legally that they couldn't do. I mean, and then, you know, somebody rang me and said, well, you know, are you excited about being in, in our company? And I said, well, I stopped at the fifth page of disclaimers, legal disclaimers, to why you can't do anything that you promised you in your marketing that you can do. And so the answer is no, of course not. Why would I do that? <laughs> you know, I mean, you've just, you've just weaseled out of everything. And, you know, this is the new breed of leadership, you know, uh, the, the old breed of leadership, sorry, covering their butt legally. For everything. And so, you know, we need a new breed of leader that is going to make promises and keep them and then some. Yeah, go above and beyond. And there's the, I like to call it the A word, accountability, instead of hiding behind the legalese and being protected by anything, be bold and go out there and say, this is what we are doing and what we're going to do. And here's when we're going to do it. And please hold us accountable if we don't. And if something comes up, we're going to communicate that with you to tell you why we were unable to do that particular thing and the steps we're going to take to be able to do it. And and it's, it's too easy for people to hide behind things. And even with social media, they can, they can say something and hide behind it. There's no accountability from that, no matter, you know, we have a complete dialogue on social media and, and leadership and the lack thereof. But ultimately it boils down to those leaders that we know are flying under the radar. Not only do we need to make sure that they step up, but, as a society, we need to support them and encourage them and be there for them because leadership, as you know, it can be a kind of a lonely island sometimes if you don't have a strong oh, yeah. network of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I've been a CEO of four very big uh, strategic communication companies, and it is a lonely place in that chair. And when you look around and you, you know, you look for people to support you and help you, um, you know, all of a sudden they disappear, <laughs> you know, so you got to kind of step up and, and be brave and be courageous. And, um, and, you know, I'm glad you brought up this point of accountability. You know, one of my favorite books is this book by, uh, Jaco Wilcox. I think it was, I may have that wrong, um, but it's called Extreme Ownership. And, you know, he was a Navy SEAL. And, you know, he talks about if, if you don't step up and be accountable and take extreme ownership of your words and your actions and your thoughts and your emotional state or your energetic state, then you're not much of a leader. And, and those around you will know it, by the way. And so, therefore, you're breeding a culture of non-accountability, of this weaseling out of things. It's a very true. And, you know, I, I sense that um, people around the world now, are waking up and becoming aware and are looking for this new breed of leader and they will support them, Michael, you know, because they they know the alternative. They're kind of awake enough to say, well, we know what leaders are not working for us anymore. Those that have been ripping us off, lying to us, deceiving us, um, you know, when we ask for help, they're not there to help us. You know, where was that support team, you know, that was supposed to support us and they're not there. And so they're making promises that are actually deceptive, and so we don't want to work with, we don't want to support those products anymore. And I think you're seeing a flood of people moving away from supporting those organizations. And those organizations are going to go broke. I mean, just look at some of the news networks uh, in your country, CNN. Um, you know, people work out what they were doing. And guess what they did? They left. They voted with their feet. And so, you know, there's a, there's a company that's in dire straits because they've been deceptive. Now, there's a lot of those companies around in, you know, in the mainstream. And those companies, I think we're going to see a natural process of those companies and those leaders, you know, literally dying off. You know, they will disappear. And then what you'll see is this uprising, this kind of new breed of companies with new, or new breed of leaders who, you know, are really awake and aware. They're self-aware. They have a personal vision. And this is a work that I do with leaders. I help them to develop their personal vision. I help them develop their personal core purpose, their personal values, their personal and unique identity. I call it their higher self, Michael. I help them to um, discover. I can't tell them what that is. It's not for me to do that. I take them on a journey of discovery. Uh, because that's already within them. It's just been suppressed because, you know, from the day we were born, um, we had identity. We were suffered identity theft. 
I mean, we were basically told to be and do something that wasn't true to our true nature. And so we've kind of been living this existence through borrowed identities like, you know, my role or my title or my gender or my geography or, you know, the team that I support or my star sign or whatever it is, you know, that people are kind of, or even their personality archetype, you know. I mean, I've, you know, you know Americans are spending $3 billion a year on personality assessments and the personality assessment is basically somebody else's predetermined classification of who they should be after doing 200 five-point Likert scale questions. I mean, it's an atrocity. I mean, what they're doing is saying, now you, we can categorise you as this, and now we've categorised you, we can fit you into a nice, neat little cage, you know, also known in corporate as a cubicle where you'll do your work and we will keep you there because you've been, you know, we've got your, we, we've got, we know who you are. And so, you know, we've classified you and we know what kind of work you should be doing. And, you know, you will do that now um, and be good and, and comply, right? And so, no, absolutely not. This is not the way, this is not the way of visionary companies and visionary leaders. You know, true visionary companies will um, sit down and work with people and find out what their skills are and then release them to be free to do amazing work through creativity and imagination and co-cooperation and uh, co-creation and collaboration, right? And so, and accountability, right? Taking extreme ownership of who they are and why they're here and what their contribution is to the company. And these are the kind of leaders, you know, truly visionary coaching-based leaders. By the way, um, out of the six leadership styles that we know, the combination of visionary coaching-based leaders are the truly exemplary leaders who build the truly visionary and most successful companies. And, you know, whether it's a company of two or five or 10 or 50 or 5,000 or 50,000, it doesn't really matter. That's just scale. But, you know, these are the leaders who, through the energy of a clarity of vision and through the freedom of, you know, allowing people to do their best work um, and the support of that energy, high energetic vibration, um, you know, which is really how you develop cultures, by the way. The cultures aren't developed by values. And that's the old world paradigm. You know, kneel down before me and tell me you, um, you know, comply to our values and maybe I'll let you into our company. It doesn't work. Of course, people are going to say yes, but they're not going to, they're not going to comply. They're, they're going to sit there and say, you know, I only said yes because I want the job and I want to be paid, but I don't really adhere to these values, you know. And, and by the way, um, the most abused value of any company on the planet is integrity. They've all got integrity as a value while they're deceiving their consumers and ripping everybody off. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so, you know, values-based cultures don't work. Energetic-based cultures do. And, you know, I've said many times the leader that masters energy is the leader that will master everything, everything, because it's all about energy. You know, we know this from quantum physics. Everything is energy. And so once you know and understand your own energy and your energy are your thoughts and your emotions and you can control that in a way and keep it elevated, once you know how to do that, then, um, you know, we know from quantum physics that like energy attracts like energy. And so if you're, if you're um, working from an elevated energy of optimism, of love, of acceptance, of harmony, then guess what you're going to attract? That's what you attract into your life. I mean, that's what I attract into my life. Probably one of the reasons why I've attracted you is because, you know, I was looking forward to meeting people like you and having great conversations with people like you. This is what it's all about, right? And and through these conversations, then we can hopefully have people listen to you and I and say, well, hold on a minute. There's a, bit, there's a different way here. There's a better way. And I'm open to that way. Let's do that because that's what's going to create a new and better world for us all for our families, for those we love, those we care about, and everybody's lives we touch. That's the game we're playing, Michael. It is, and people are starving for it, and they're looking for it. It's like, I'm really hungry, but I, I don't know what I need to order. And you know, great human beings like yourself are out here saying, here's the menu you need to look at. And these are the well, things. Well, this is, this is precisely the work I'm doing, Michael, is because I work with a lot of leaders, and they say, I know what I don't want, but I'm not quite sure about what I do want and how to get there. 
And so the work that I do with leaders is I say, well, let's take a step back first and let's get clear and focused about who you are and why you're really here. You know, those two primordial questions that have plagued humanity for time immemorial, who am I and why am I here? You know, the why of things. And so, you know, Simon Sinek has done a lot of work on this and kind of breakthrough work where he said, you know, you've got to get back to the why. It's all about the why. And, you know, I know from my years, my decades working with um, you know, brand strategy and communications companies, some of the biggest advertising agencies on this planet, that people buy the why. They pay a premium for the why. They don't pay a premium for the what and how. Nobody really cares. You know, when you buy a Mercedes Benz, you don't really care about, you know, how it works. You buy the why of it. You know, when you when you uh, buy any products, you buy the why of those products because you want to belong to something. You want to belong to what that brand stands for, you know, the why of it, um, you know, how the technology works. So I'm sitting here with a MacBook Pro sitting in front of me. I have no idea how this thing works. All I know is, you know, I am, um, I've got something here that's bigger than the product. It's the brand. And people can become brands as well, you know, as that kind of bastardized term, personal branding. I never use that word anymore because it's been bastardized by a lot of people who have said, well, it's all about your CV or it's all about, you know, the clothes you wear or your style and manner it, or, or your personality. It's not. That is not a personal brand. So now I talk about, you know, uh, I call my method the BSI method. BSI stands for best self-identity. And really what I'm talking about is your higher self, your true higher nature. You know, the way you were really born, um, you know, onto this planet before uh, the system got hold of you and started dumbing you down and uh, making you comply through um, some other form of identity. That's why I call it identity theft. And so, you know, I, I, re I release people, leaders. Mostly I work with leaders uh, because, you know, leaders are the influencers, right? And so I work with leaders who then um, get that clarity, get that focus, and then what they do is they start helping others get clarity and focus as well. And through clarity and focus is freedom. And this really is all about freedom, you know, the, the freedom to be able to work, to be able to create, to be able to add value to people's lives, to uplift people's lives, and in the process, uplift your own. It's extraordinary. You know, I mean, I, I can't see why we haven't been doing it, or we've been lied into, you know, thinking we were doing it, but we weren't. Um, and so now I think we're, we're moving into a new era of leadership, Michael. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm working with leaders to be the vanguard of that. That's the game. You know, conscious leaders, self-aware conscious leaders who are vibrating at very high levels of energy, who are masters of energy, who then go on and become masters of everything they touch. And, and that really is all about the optimal performance state of success flow because they're in flow, you know, that beautiful word, um, that conscious state of knowing. Um, this is what, you know, the work I do with leaders, Michael. It's awesome fun. It definitely is awesome fun, and I'm so thankful that you were on the show today. So, Glenn, thank you so much for this. Where can people find out more about you, the, the BSI method and everything else you do? So the uh, my website is bsimethod.com, bsimethod.com. And if you want to connect with me, it's very simple, bsimethod.com forward slash connect. And I'll definitely have that in the show notes. So again, Glenn, love this conversation. Thank you so very much for this amazing pleasure, work you're Michael. doing. And really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day to be on the show. And thank you for the work you're doing as well. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Breakfast Leadership Show, part of The Breakfast Leadership Network. Visit breakfastleadership.com for tips on empowering your business and your life.